So we'll look at Robert Harding. He's one of my favorite discus throwers, even though he's a non-reverse. And we'll talk about, we talk about the non-reverse and on that checklist, I'll bring that up. Okay. So you're going to notice uh, we'll go through and we'll look at his six pillars. I'll just play it so we can get it to that too. So this is again, how we look at the throw. We're training each position. This is why we're talking about the finish because we have to learn the specific positions and put it together into the throw. So now is where you see Harding goes into the power position. So you're going to notice we always are thinking upper body, lower body as we're getting into the delivery because we have that sequence. So if the sequence gets slightly off, it compromises efficiency. You're going to lose power. And remember, the ultimate thing is it's this convergence of force, right? We want the lower body, we want the upper body, and we want everything going into the throw. And a lot of times you have forces diverging and that's why athletes are going to have a hard time picking up things. Okay. So what you're going to notice here, again, what we talk about is opening the block arm out, right? And so a lot of times people say, open it this way. But if you do that, you're going to have most of your athletes, in our opinion, are going to have a tendency to open the shoulder. You want to open the arm out. So everything, the path is always this way, which means the shoulder follows that way too. So you're going to look at maximizing the radius of the discus. So now you look at the role of the lower body. If you keep the heel elevated, you can see here how Harding's heel is really elevated, never comes down from that point, which creates a really fast rotational axis. And he's consciously trying to push the knee and the hip as well. So that's why that heel never comes down. And now you're going to see as he comes through, he's going to be able to smash it. And, and this is one of the things you can kind of see. You can see the whole bottom of the shoe because he's pushed everything forward. You're going to see the hips are pretty much, or the shoulders are pretty much on top of the hips. And now you really see how he maximizes the radius. This is what you see elite discus throwers all doing in common. We, if we showed you all the top 10 guys, they're all out here because maximizing that radius, especially at the distances these guys throw, I think it's two centimeters will add up to roughly uh, nine feet, right? So if you can extend your radius this much at this level, that's nine more feet in distance. So flying the discus and all that kind of stuff, that's additional things, but we're going to talk about some of those positions but it makes a huge difference in these details, make all the difference in the world. When you look at that and you're looking at pillar six, we want the shoulders level, like we said, on top of the hips. We're looking at engaging that block arm. So we stop it at the side. A lot of times throwers are taught to pull that arm down and back. It has to stop in front. When you teach athletes to pull back, shoulder pulls back. You're going to lose power and you're going to notice that these elite throwers watch as they come all the way through you're going to see that that arm stays there until that dis even when the discus goes, you'll see it as it comes through. You'll see right there. See how the block arm stays there? The discus is gone. You've seen it. He's following through. The whole body has moved. You don't see the shoulder going back. He's following through. Block arm is stopped at the side of the body. So the big don'ts that you guys want to make sure that don't happen in your rotational throw is you don't want to jump, right? Discus has to be horizontal. Again, the implements out here, you're trying to pull it across. If you lift like you would in the shot, that has a tendency to happen sometimes. Your rotational shot putters will start shot putting the discus and vice versa. So you don't want to jump. You want to be extremely horizontal. The lift comes through the delivery hip, not from jumping. As soon as you go vertical, you can't go vertical and turn I mean, you can, but you're losing ground force and you're losing distance. Pulling the block shoulder back and jumping, those are the two things that will absolutely kill the throw. Okay, so why that's gonna be bad and you're gonna screw up your back. You think throwing is this. Now look where my hips are. There's no way you can get your hip ahead of that. You need to stop your arm here and throw. Blind. Okay, you see what you're doing? This, look where your shoulders are. This is where you're at. Your chest is never over here. Look at the difference. That's freaking massive. Do you see that? So now bend your knee, open this leg. Oh, your knees and your hips moving into the throw now. Look, oh yeah, go, 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 go. Now see how your shoulder's coming up? Arm here, stop, do not move it. This moves everything. Okay, keep turning. That's what you're not doing. Smooth. That's better. Push your hips back. Feel how you're loaded. 
Now you can push and pull. Just pull it. So that was better. Okay, so you're so used to pulling this shoulder. That's a nightmare problem. See how, see this is, this is the thing I gotta get you out of. You have your arm basically like this. You're by default pulling your shoulder back. So you've gotta keep your arm stretched, not, do you feel the difference? This is, a, this is, little stuff like this is what people miss. It was a little better, but you did the, the, the wind up is incorrect. That was a better one. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. So much better. Feels much better, right? 